Hey ladies and gents, this is Izdwiz coming to you from PowerLordsReturn.com and I'm here with art ex extraordinaire Nate Barch. Uh, well known for his work on the Masters of the Universe properties, collaborating with the Horsemen on uh, the Castle Grayskull, um, the new Cra Castle Grayskull, the new Snake Mountain which we see there, and uh, last but not least, the Mythic Legion's card art. And uh, I'm very happy to be able to talk to Nate here at his office where he works. Um, it took a while to track him down, but uh, we're happy That's to be just here. Utah. Utah's just a tiny little state. The wilds of Utah, you know, we've been going all over the place, and this is uh, the, the last stop. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the inspiration for um, the card art? that you've done so far for Mythic Legions. Sure. Um, when we... This was a few years ago. I remember being out at... and out in New Jersey. I think it was for Toy Fair. And uh, Eric and I were... Eric was showing me some sketches of what would become the Mythic Legions line. You know, he really... He, he has these grand visions of, of dwarves and elves and knights and ogres and, and dragons and and all kinds of monsters, and I was just blown away by his, by his sketches and by his passion behind the project. And um, <clears throat> some of the, clearly some of the early inspirations for, for this line stem back to the Dungeons & Dragons series uh, of the 80s, as well as Masters of the Universe and Lord of the Rings and that kind of a thing, but um, Eric and I specifically talked about an artist named Ken Kelly, and uh, he was he was huge in the '80s. He does a lot of he's kind of in that same class as Frazetta and Boris Vallejo and those guys. So he uh, we absolutely were looking at a lot of his artwork. Um, it's kind of fun because if you'll notice from in both of the pieces, they <laughs> you could almost say that they're like black velvet paintings, but they're not really. But they could be anyway. But. If you looked back at that time period, there was a lot of atmosphere. There was a lot of uh, a deep, heavy mood. You know, this is, it's all about war and, and very savage, brutal, kind of violent lifestyle. So it just comes from a, a dark, black place. And uh, so we, we really liked the idea of just starting with a black canvas and then pulling colors up and out of it. That was uh, very much how the, the old Masters of the Universe box art was handled, as well as... Um, the old Dungeons and Dragons artwork that Ken Kelly did, and uh, yeah. So um, you were talking specifically about um, the fact that the Horsemen kind of let you run with this, and and you've got some characters in the art that aren't yet part of the mythos, but may someday sure. be. Yeah, you never know. It, it depends on where the line goes. I'm sure uh, we've heard the Horsemen talk about dragons, in particular. They were talking about dragons even before this happy accident happened. If you look at this artwork, uh, my initial th thumbnails and th the initial ideas that we were going to go with was just that we knew that an action figure had to stand. You know, if I had an action figure, he's standing here on the card art. Maybe if the card art is about like so. So we wanted something nice and bright and explosive to, to kind of frame and, and showcase the figure. Um, and then really I didn't think there would be much more to it. The idea was that you would look at the figure and not, you know, fuss about the card art too much. Um, and so as I started painting up some of the smoke up around this area, up where the dragons had happened, it just happened to start to look like a dragon. And, um, yeah, I just, I just kind of ran with it. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm messaging the horsemen and showing them, I'm like, hey, look, there's, this is kind of happening. Should I just run with it? And they were totally cool with it. They, they loved it. That's pretty wicked. I mean, were you listening to heavy metal at the time? Hang, banging your head? I usually listen to a lot of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> so that could have been in the influence there, as well as some other, uh, some more modern bands that are... That, is that floating yeah. skull, as people have been... Um, wondering if that that's Poxis or or is is that one of the? Um, I'm thing not going to say it is Poxis, but I'm not going to say it's not. But I will say, just from as I created it, once the dragon happened, we realized there was room to put in all kinds of other demons, and right. monster faces, and that kind of thing. We were like, yeah, and they just the horseman said, yeah, go for it. I knew I wanted to get one of the the gin 
or the demons right. in there. So I, I put him on the front. But really, otherwise, I also really loved the Bob Goblin. And so this kind of started to become the Bob Goblin. But then became something else. He definitely could be from that world or from the, the species. So who knows if, you know, who knows? These, these could become something someday, or they could just be kind of those early concept pieces that might lead to whatever the horsemen want to do with right. whatever, whenever they do make a dragon or whenever we do finally see Poxus, what that might look like. Who knows? Right. So why don't you tell us about the uh, troll box art that you're working on? Right now, that's that's the next project for Myth Mythic Legions, right? Yeah, that would be the next one. Um, I know that with the troll piece, we don't have the final uh, specs yet from China, but as soon as we have that, I'll be busily painting that. But conceptually, we know that the troll is it's a giant, it's a giant toy. It's people are going to pay a hundred bucks for it. Um, there is a you know you might still see this on the back of the box, but. Around the rest of the box, we really want to create something uh, new for the piece and special for the trolls. Um, my initial thoughts just rumbling around in my head. I haven't put anything down on paper yet, but I'm, I'm imagining like a giant troll just bashing through a tree or a castle tower or, you know, knocking a bunch of knights or skeletons or whatever, just to see them flailing off into the distance or... I, I do want to, I definitely want to pack a little more action for some reason into this, into the troll box art. A little more than what you're seeing here. I mean, this is interesting. We that's, don't know what's happening. That's pretty dramatic. You've got volcanic like, eruptions and, yeah. you know, big battle scenes and all that. But uh -huh. that troll uh, idea sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. And with this one, you know, it's like preparations for, you know that there's some serious action happening in here, but... But the idea for the back packaging was, you know, we knew that we had to have places for text. We knew that we had to have places for pictures and, and right. logos and stuff. So I, I intentionally left it a little bit calmer, I guess. But with the troll, with right. the box art, this will be the first time when we can really say, here's the troll, look at what's inside. But then also, this packaging should harken back to those like early Masters of the Universe box arts where, you know, there, there's full-on war happening and it's... You just want to you want to watch the train wreck, so to speak. I guess. Right. Okay. Very cool. Thanks. Yeah.